welcome to Transformation Tuesday. Today's Transformation Tuesday is all about making excellent news resolutions that you actually keep this year. And there is science behind it. And we have a wonderful tool to help you do that that we'll be telling you about at the end of this time. But this is a little mini workshop. What I want you to do if you get a chance, if you're watching this in replay or live, however you're watching this, grab a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil, something nice to write in, right? We're going to be crafting your resolutions out Today. there to the world, but we're going to be learning about it. And as a mm -hmm. mindfulness instructor, and health and wellness coach, I all the time hear this time of year from my clients, I hear resolutions, resolutions, resolutions. I have to get my resolutions together. And it is, it's a wonderful chance every year. We're turn, literally turning the page to 2023 this year. And I, I know, I can't, I, it's like, I don't even, I can't even imagine it being the year 2023. It's like, are we still, you know, way back when it happened so fast. I know, New Year's, surprise. But um, New Year's are that opportunity to, you know, try something new, do something new, recommit to ourselves, reestablish our intentions of what kind of person we want to be. And if you want to be everything that you want to be for yourself in 2023, well, here's how you go about doing it. So in researching resolutions for my clients this year, um, I talked to experts, I went out there, I did research, I, you know, I really one is to find out how can someone be better at resolutions? Why do resolutions fail so miserably? And I got some great answers. And the answers that I got have four ingredients, like a little recipe, okay? So here are the four ingredients to making excellent resolutions that actually work out for the year. So the very first one, the very first ingredient is be realistic okay so you don't just say for instance i am going to lose 100 pounds by june 1st well that's not going to happen unless you have bariatric surgery and have more than 200 pounds to lose is anything like that going to happen that's only on one of those 600 pound life type shows where people go through extreme measures to drop some weight and even then they may not drop 100 pounds in six months you need to do something a little bit more realistic. So instead of, I'm gonna lose you know, 100 pounds by June 1st, make it something you could do. For instance, um, on my 12 week program, I see people all the time losing an average of 22 and a half pounds in the 12 weeks, right? Some people lose more, some people lose a little less, depends on a lot of factors, but that a 25 or 20 pound loss by March 15th is totally doable. That's something doable. So make that something better than I'm just going to lose a hundred pounds. Um, some people might say, you know, maybe it's not about health. Maybe it's about finances. So rather than saying, I'm going to get completely out of debt this year. Well, that's, that's nice, but that's not a plan. It's not realistic either. Maybe saying something like I am going to get, I'm going to reduce my debt by 50% this year. That's great. You're not going up. You're not continuing to go up. You go 50% down. That's a doable thing over a year. That's doable. Rather than saying, I'm going to get my dream job. Maybe you say something like, um, I am going to research what career is best for me and pull together my resume to work towards that. I'm going to figure out what that dream job is. And then I'm going to go out and I'm going to do something about it. Very realistic things. These are things that, that you'd be able to do. So that's, you know, getting realistic. So that's great. You know, get real with, with what it is that is, is doable, something you can do. So then there's make it actionable. So if you have specific outcomes, things are more likely to happen. So if I wanted to go to Phoenix, Arizona, I could park, I could take my car and point it, we're Southwest for me, Southwest. <laughs> I could go southwest and I could get to Phoenix, Arizona from Portland, Oregon if I point my car in that direction. But if I don't have a map and I don't know where Phoenix is, it's going to be harder. Plus, that's okay. To get to Phoenix is okay. But something more specific, something more actionable would be I'm going to get the 
to the corner of 5th and Main in downtown Phoenix, Arizona at 3 p.m. on February 6th. That's, that's super actionable, specific metrics, things that you're going to meet. So in order to do that, you wind back. How long is it going to take to get there? What map am I going to use? Back in the old days, we used to go to AAA and get a triptych. I don't know how many people remember a triptych, but it was this big thing that AAA used to make for you, Automobile Club of America. And you would go before any road trip, you'd get a triptych and you'd have a map to get from A to B. Now we just, you know, follow, follow our phone, follow Waze, follow Google Maps. But, you know, without Google Maps, without any of that, without any triptychs or maps or stopping at gas stations for maps or whatever you're going to do, you're not going to get to exactly where you want to be. You might get somewhere close to it. You might end up in New Mexico and say, oh, well, yeah, I kind of like New Mexico. I guess that's good. But that's not what you set out to do. Okay, so get specific. So examples. Remember that just lose weight. Well, we decided that was a little bit too general. So we said, let, too uh, unrealistic. So we said, rather than I'm going to lose 100 pounds by June 1st, let's make it I'm going to lose 25 pounds by March 15th make it super specific, hire a health coach, wink, wink, <laughs> or talk to your doctor, join a program, uh, talk to a nutritionist, whatever that is, like an actionable step and lose your first 25 pounds by March 15th. Completely doable through holistic means, adding fitness, like really make it super specific so you know what it's gonna look and feel like and sound like and taste like, right? You are gonna get specific on what that is. Rather than saying, get out of debt. Remember that, Jenna? I'm just going to get out of debt. We decided maybe 50%, I'm going to be 50% down on my debt throughout the year. And in order to do that, I'm going to maybe write up a realistic budget. Okay? And with the savings in my budget, I'm going to pay down my credit cards more every month. That's specific. That is a get out of debt plan, right? Rather than just get a better job, we had said, uh, get a get some research done on what that job is going to be would be a great first step a realistic step like where are you going towards but make it even more specific get your resume together get it out there to those places uh, buy yourself a nice interview outfit and i'm going to do that by july 1st super specific super actionable how much money do i want to be able to make um, what part of the world do I want to do i want to be able to work from home do i want to go into an office we have a lot more choices in that area now so we have it being realistic. We have it being actionable and specific, super important. The next one was a surprise. I was like, really? Like, yes, is the experts like this really helps. The next one is give yourself a reward, built in reward that if you meet your actionable, realistic goals that you set up, there's a carrot, there's a, there's a goal, uh, a reward for that goal being met in there. So for instance, if you lose your 25 pounds and you go through these steps and it's this actionable thing by this date, I am going to buy myself new jeans, go for a makeover, get a new hairdo, um, go out dancing in my new jeans, you know, like really make it something you'd look forward to doing. Maybe going to the beach this summer with my new body, you know, whatever that would be, build a reward in. For each credit card you pay off, remember the get out of debt example. So for each one of those credit cards that you pay off, maybe you take yourself out to a nice schmancy dinner at a nice restaurant that you haven't uh, tried out before. Ashley Armstrong, hello. <laughs> nice to see you again. I just saw you over, I think on the other side. Well, hello. Let me know what your resolution, tell me what rings true for you, Ashley. I'd really like to find out what's going on with your DMs and definitely Definitely, everybody listening to this, send me your, either post on the comments down below when I post to this video afterwards or up on the DMs, just write out what it is. I'd be happy to help you craft this. So we got the realistic, we got the actionable and detailed, and now we're building in rewards. So for the resume one, for getting your dream job. So maybe when you get your dream job, you're gonna buy yourself a couple fantastic work outfits or a new car a, or a better car or whatever to be able to get to your job safely or a nice 
background or something for your Zoom call meeting world you're going to be living in if you're going to be working from home. Like set a reward up and there. Put something in there that you're going to feel good about uh, when you do that. And the last piece is one of those mindful pieces. It is truly the secret sauce to all of this. It is the sprinkling of magic dust to making these come to life. And that is respecting your resolutions. Now, I don't know how many of you remember Susie Orman. She has super blonde hair, super white teeth. She was this late 90s, early 2000s gal who talked all about women taking control of their money and finances. And she talked about if you wad up your money and you treat it badly and you reach in your pocket and you like, or you empty your purse out, it's just a bunch of nasty bills, you don't even know what's there, you're kind of smoothing it out, counting your pennies on the counter. If you treat your money that way, it's not going to respect you either. If you disrespect it, it will disrespect you and you will not have a good relationship with your money. Well, the same goes for making these resolutions. Because there's a two-part secret sauce that I heard from every expert had this exact same secret step that they said is the, the key to making this happen. And that is respecting your resolutions. Just like Susie Armand talked about money. If you don't respect your intentions and really respect them, they're not going to happen for you. You're not taking them seriously. You're not giving them the respect that they need. So when you're writing these things down, don't do it on a, a back of a, you know, post that's already written on somewhere and just kind of shove it on your desk and like whatever. Really write them. Make them realistic and actionable. And build in rewards. Really craft a statement of your intention for next year. Put it up. I am going to hire Sheila to help me with my weight. I'm going to lose 25 pounds by March 15th and I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to go to the doctor. I'm going to get, you know, real specifics that are realistic that you can do with specific metrics in there that you can meet with rewards that are going to be. And the second half of that secret sauce, besides just respecting it, writing it down really well so that this is key. Imagine who you're going to be when that happens. I say that again. Spend some time journaling, writing it out as a promise to yourself that you're making this promise to yourself. You're making an oath, your vow to yourself with your intentions. You're taking it seriously, respecting it, putting up. But you're also going to imagine what that person will feel like. So for myself, like what will Sheila feel like when she gets there? What will she be eating? What will she be wearing? What will she be doing? How will she feel in her own skin? Will she be proud of herself? Will she be making other goals? Will she be more help hopeful? When she drops her 25 pounds, is she going to feel great about herself? How do those new genes feel? You know, just really imagine what it's going to be like to be that person who followed through with the promise you made to yourself. Just like interpersonal relationships, when someone makes you a promise and they stick to it, you love them even more. It just melts your heart. But you gotta do the same for yourself. The promises that you make to yourself are even more important. And you gotta keep them. And you gotta take them seriously by making those oaths, making those vows, making that promise, imagining what it's going to be, making it realistic, actionable, and reward-based. And in that way, your resolutions are going to happen next year. I'm doing this year, this year. I'm going to be posting my resolutions up to the group so you guys can see what kind of resolution I came up with for myself as well. It's a two-parter. Um, and, you know, I invite you to post yours as well and for us to help each other and support each other in this group to truly be the rebooter group that supports each other as in a community where women lift up other women and help them reach their goals. That would be such a cool way to have this group be something meaningful is to be able to do that. So I good luck on your intentions for next year, for your resolutions. Make good promises to yourself. Practice self-compassion. You are worth it. 
You're amazing. Thank you, ladies, for showing up for yourselves today for Transformation Tuesdays. This is Sheila Kilty. I'll see you next time. Take care, ladies. Bye-bye.